approach you. You will be the first face that these streamers see. <sighs> Could it be? Could so many things be happening at once? The Dadvocate planned a live further than three hours in advance, started on time. All you guys have to tell me now is that my audio sounds like ass and <laughs> we can we can at least break the holy trinity. All right, we got our first comment here from Robert. Thank you, Robert, for being our very first comment of the day. <sighs> if it sounds like all of the lives lately, I've just been sick or recovering from being sick. That's that's been the reality. It felt like I was sick all December. I enjoyed one week of good health and just, just spiraled back down again. I have managed to catch like everything that can be thrown when it comes to winter viruses, but it sounds like I'm not alone. Actually, it's it sounds like many of us are in the Black Plague bandwagon. So, hello everybody. Let me primp my eyelashes for a good stream here. I've got my um, lovely mug here with my tea and honey. As long as everything's honest and on the up and up. Wouldn't that be such a weird thing to lie about? Like, just kidding, guys. I've been faking being sick for a month. Got him. Thank you for the subscription. Hello, Dad, because I'd love to see you do another talk with Sarah Dawn more. I love Sarah. Honestly, if you guys want, like, a woman to almost single-handedly thank for me, like, really finally getting into YouTube, look no further than SDM because... She pushed me so hard. She was like, you have to get on YouTube. You have to be on YouTube. She pushed me and pushed me until finally, look what she's done. Look what you made her do. Oh man, we're still early and there's so many of you. Oh my goodness. Hello from UK. Thank you to everyone saying that my audio finally does not suck. We love that for me. I feel like the brightness is too bright. I'm gonna make it chill a little bit. <laughs> Hang in there last year, the same happened to me. I got the flu, then a sinus infection, then RSV, then COVID. Wait, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that anymore. YouTube's really weird about that. Then the panorama, the panini. Sucked, but I haven't had it much since. My immune system got buff. I'm drinking the immune system tea here. That's always the way it goes. It's like mono, then bronchitis, the flu, then the other flu. Yo, what up, Philippines? A big fan of your lore, myths, and legends. Hello, Poland. Big fan of you giving me my funny nose. Thank you, Poland. Hello from Germany. Man, I'm a mutt of like all of y'all. Not the Philippines, but my stepson is Filipino, so I'm like Filipino by association. But, but yeah, I'm a little bit German. I love y'all in Germany, by the way. I um, grew up learning a little bit of German, but I never stuck with it. It's not exactly as pretty as the Romance languages. You know what I mean? No offense. <laughs> we got some other other Filipinos in here. I feel like I should just make you guys some honorary rice. And that's, look, that's no shade. I know you guys love rice with every meal. It is not a meal until there is also a cup of rice. Don't even, don't even tell me I'm a hater for that. It's true. All right. I spilled a little bit of my tea, but it's fine. Now I just have a slightly warm spot on my lap. <laughs> Dude, I love me some rice. That's like me. I'm not Asian, but I feel like I'm Asian by association with just how much Asian food I eat. Same with Italian. But I always say I'm not Italian, but I made one. Did you guys know that um, if a woman has a baby that either follows a son... 
So this is like either a, a daughter that was born after the son was born, or she has a son that she will forever retain uh, some of the male's DNA inside of her. It's a fun little fact. Um, so if I would have had a boy, or if somehow Dellen was mine biologically prior, um, then I could potentially have my husband's DNA in me, but I don't because I had a daughter. Weird, right? Can you make a woman seminar on YouTube to help them understand? That's what I'm trying to do. That's, that is truly what I'm trying to do here is like make a space that people actually want to listen to actually see someone who <laughs> has has lived a marriage for a while and actually still loves and likes the guy you gonna have to explain again i didn't understand it yeah i'll have to do a whole episode on like the dna of that but it's interesting it'll make you start getting conspiracy theories once you understand the science of it like wait a minute if he had a, a son with her and then she had a son with someone else, can she still have the first father's eye color in the second father's baby? We might be starting off a little strong. Sorry, guys. For being sick, I sure am going, like, full force into the Putnam Squares here. I'll try to, try to reel it back a little bit so we can just get into some... <laughs> I could have partially absorbed TJ. I could have if... I had a son by him. Look, I don't make the rules. I just read a lot about them. <laughs> but it's 11.03. I said that at 11, we were going to start reading some Am I Wrong stories. And I have gathered quite a few for you. I'm, I'm ready and rip-raring to jump into it though the brain fog is still here so you guys are gonna have to help me through and remind me that i'm actually in reality when things get too weird um so of course we've got the chat here to weigh in on everything that we're talking about today but also as a fun surprise um my lovely husband tj did happen to have a short day at work uh went in super early got out super early so He's chilling, he's wandering around the house a little bit, but if there's a topic that you guys absolutely just need TJ to like weigh in on or be the tiebreaker for, I can summon him. I have the ability, I have learned the summon TJ spell. I'm a high enough level. So if you guys need my husband, I can get him for you. <laughs> yeah, we've we've got quite the bit of tea today. These are all going to be pretty much relationship oriented, I would say. Um, nothing too like custodial as I've done in the past. We're, we have quite a spread here. And I feel like we're going to end up spending time on every single story because these are all so crazy. I didn't see the mannequin thing in the background. Yeah, you guys, this is Mr. Oof. He holds my patron board. If you ever are like, I don't need money, but I do need exclusive dad merch, dad advocate merch, and for her to write my name in cursive on a board that a stuffed doll holds. I can make that dream happen for you, baby. <laughs> I, believe it or not, I, I know you're shocked that a woman on the internet would accept your money, but <laughs> there's another one. No, seriously, guys, your likes and comments are more than enough. My HSA card is loaded. I can buy as much Dayquil and NyQuil as I want. So don't worry about me, guys. <laughs> but let's get right into it. Our first story of the day, um, and the one that I kind of had like based the thumbnail around, is why do I feel bad dating multiple people at once? Let's go into this with some nuance, guys, all right? Hey, Kalamazoo! Michigan or is there by some weird turn of events a different Kalamazoo I went to uh took my daughter to Kalamazoo a few months ago she was so funny she was like but when are we getting to the zoo 
<laughs> it's just a Native American word, honey. I know it's confusing. <laughs> Why do I feel bad dating multiple people at once? So I, 25 female, decided to be more active in dating. For the first time in my life, I'm actually dating three people at once. They all seem nice. I'm enjoying hanging out with them. After the first dates, I didn't feel bad, but now after the third date with one guy, we'll call him A. What do, what do you think the odds are she's gonna call the other ones B and C? Oh god, she does. <laughs> Sorry, it's too loud. <laughs> That's funny. And another second planned one with the other guy, B, for the next day. I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong. On the third date with A, he spent a lot of money to go do an activity and to go to a nice restaurant. He probably spent over $250 for the night, most of it because the restaurant was expensive. He also kissed me. It was a bad kiss, but not a reason I wouldn't see him again. Who? You gotta keep in mind, like, I've been out of the dating game for a really long time. I mean, of course I'm dating my husband. We go on dates. But it's just a little bit different when, like, you guys are married because it's just your shared income going toward the, the event. But in these initial one to three dates, it's pretty societally expected that the man pays. How often are y'all running up a quarter grand, though? Is that... I could see that, though. Like... Even me as a woman, if I'm on a third date, a lot can happen in three dates, okay? You can really, like, vibe with someone in that amount of time. You know, think about, like, friends you've made on a train ride or something. It's same, almost the same amount of time, likely. I, I could see myself dishing out 250 if I was, like, really into them. I don't know, though, because I'd be so afraid to do that. I would be like, am I being stupid by spending this much? And considering he is one of three options at the moment, is it stupid of him for him to make that investment? Is it the proper move so that he can properly compete with these others? Let me finish the story. She seems charitable enough. Now I'm going on a date with B the very next day after date with A, and I'm fairly sure he will also try to kiss me. Again, he'll probably spend about $100 for our evening all in all. Meanwhile, I'm also planning a date with guy C. I'm not really sure why, but it feels a bit icky. I'm not trying to use anyone, and I guess there's also the chance that they're also dating other people, which I don't really feel is wrong on their part. I haven't spoken with any of them about exclusivity yet. Currently, my interest in all three is still pretty low, but it's still the early days. Oof. This is, you have to understand, this is kind of new to me, like reading this as not only a woman, but a woman who so far removed from the dating game, you know, been married. This is painful. I, I can tell that she, as she was writing this and reading it back to herself, that she does actually feel bad. The question is, sh should she feel bad? Again, right now where I'm leaving my reservation, <laughs> she gave herself the ick. <laughs> Truly, uh, because to me, I guess I've always seen it as, as long as you are not sleeping with all of these people, if you're just talking to and getting to know more than one person at a time, that doesn't necessarily rub me the wrong way. But she, I mean, she's running the numbers. She's doing the math. As we all are, let's be real, we can't just say, oh yeah, I went out to eat with him, but I had no idea how much my burger and the appetizer that I wanted and the dessert that I wanted and the three drinks that I had cost. I had no idea. You know, you can, you can make a rough estimate. Come on, like, we're not living under a rock. It's not like we don't know how much this stuff costs. And it's also interesting because he, she's admitting out loud that she has low interest. Like, the, the odds of her maintaining long-term interest. 
it's just so surprising to me. I I can't believe that she's going on date three with all of them, but the interest is low? If the interest was still low after the second date, would you call it or would you keep like grinding at it. I don't know, man. This isn't a JRPG. You can't grind your way into liking someone. It's definitely true that the more time you spend with a person, the more attracted to them you will become, if they're a good person, of course. Obviously, these people are not abhorrent people, because she has nothing bad to say about any of them. <laughs> it's just that even though they're all nice, and meeting the bar, none of them seem to have the wow factor that she's waiting for. So I guess I'm curious how many casual dating partners at a time like this, where, again, you might not think that this is much of an investment. This is clearly not much of an investment beyond time on her part, but these guys are kind of putting in money and effort and like what do you think the odds are that these guys are taking multiple girls on $250 dates? The, the whole thing ends with I would like to find someone to be with and I know that it will only happen if I put myself out there and spend more time dating men. Am I doing something wrong? A lot of her statement is fair. It's, it is true that you're not going to find success in dating unless you put yourself out there. You have to. You have to abandon a fear of rejection and just keep putting yourself out there. But putting yourself out there doesn't necessarily mean dating multiple people at once. This is... Uh, I don't know, how would you feel if you were on, you had just finished up your third date with a girl? And also guys, tell me what it would take to spend $250 on the date. That does seem like a lot to me. Maybe, maybe people will be watching and be like, girlfriend, wake up, that's the bare minimum. I don't know, maybe I'm not like enlightened yet, but $250 seems like an awful lot. Like I would, I, I love, going out with my family and even when we go out as a family of four like even when i was drinking and i would order like two cocktails it would be tough to even push like a buck 50 on a bill how 250 you're working that man y'all are doing a lot like i'm even thinking about when we go to dave and busters and I'm, like, loading up everyone's cards, you know, so that we can, like, maximize our game time. I still don't think I've spent a quarter of a grand. That's, I still don't think I have. That's a lot, isn't it? Okay, I'm glad that you guys are with me. And she's, this is low-level interest, too, for her. This is her being, like... I guess I'll get to know some people, you know? If it's a play and dinner. Yeah, there's there are some expensive activities for sure. And it's it's cool that he's entertaining the activities too. I we love a man who can plan a good date. It's just so funny. It feels like these guys are are seemingly doing everything right, but only one of them can win, and it doesn't sound like any of them are winning. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. This is sad. If this was me constantly, like, paying and paying and paying all this money for dates just for people who are just kind of like, you'll fill the time slot for my Tuesday you know, I need to need to take home half a sandwich for work the next day. <laughs> Did you just equate $250 to 20 Burger King meals? <laughs> that's 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 almost a full month of lunch. 
<laughs> I guess I guess it's fair. I'm so sorry for all my congestion, you guys. I'm truly trying to power through this. Let me read through some of yours. On my third date with my now partner spent $100 on the date. Bought me a $150 Banana Republic dress. Depends on who you date. All right. Well, you guys are still together. So I think that your partner was probably not wrong for sensing that the vibes were strong on that one. You can do a lot for nothing, honestly, truly. And I think that call this a controversial opinion if you want. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. In my opinion, if you are a woman who has been invited on a very nice date like this, and you're well aware of the fact that this man is, thank you for the stars, that this man is uh, spending, you know, now in the hundreds on you, but you also know in your heart of hearts that there are no sparks flying. There is no chemistry. I don't think it's wrong to stress to this man, hey, let's do something a bit more casual. I'm not sure if the vibe is fully there, but I don't want to give up on getting to know you. I just don't. I just think we should do something a little bit more like a coffee shop. Like, it's fine. Boundaries do not ruin a relationship. They extend a relationship based on what you're willing to give, okay? It's not wrong. I think that there's a lot of guys who would take that chance and who would appreciate that. Who would be like, you know what? Yeah, like, let's do this. Worst case scenario, I get, like, a buddy, you know? Maybe a good job reference down the line, like... Sure, let's make it a little bit more casual. I, I think a lot of guys would be on board for that. And that's something that I have done in the past. I remember specifically years ago, obviously before my husband, this very nice man asked me out to a really nice restaurant for Valentine's Day. And I was like, oh man, like I have to let you know, I'm not interested at all. I'm not interested in dating or anything, but like, I have nothing going on for Valentine's Day. If you want to just, like, go get dinner, we pay for ourselves and just hang out, I'd be down for that. And, like, we ended up doing that, and it was super chill. No one expected anything by the end of it because of that honest, informed knowledge there. But I think deep down she knows that she's letting these men, like, give her wifey treatment and she is like, I know I'm not wifey, but put the glass slipper on me anyway. Like, no, girl, you know that belongs to Cinderella. You know that this treatment is for another girl. And I think that this is what burns a lot of guys out so much, too, in dating. You know, we've got all these really nice women out here who are like, why don't guys, like, put in the effort when it comes into dating? And it's like, they have, but just, like, on dozens of women who like not only rejected them but like shamed them and embarrassed them over it and now they're taking what we call the safer approach you know it's like you only have so many years out of a man that you can wring out his absolute like best effort before he can take so many losses i mean i don't know Do, would you say that the consistency through which like, the the amount of which you have planned your first dates have stayed consistent since you first started dating? Or will you would you admit or concede that as you've gotten, like, later and later into the dating pool, you've gotten more creative with spending less money and still having a good time, but you're not about to, like, go outside with the boombox every single time a cute girl winks at you. You know what I mean? W women can admit the same. We too are not going to put all of our eggs in one basket or go full force up and away with every handsome man that gives us the time of day either. I got burned out at, on dating after loss after loss. That's It's gotta be rough. You lose the, the spark and the fire to like want to fill the night sky with impressions and diamonds.
I don't know. As far as if she should feel bad about it, like I said, I think she should only feel about it bad about it if she continues to let these men keep spending so much of their money. You gotta, you gotta help these men chill on the wallets, okay? I think that you should... You know how people say, like, you receive the love you think you deserve? You know? I, I think that in like a, a flip sense of that w women should really only be letting these men these men spend <laughs> what you know they should be spending you know what i mean like help these men out i just think it's a little i think you should feel a little icky if you are letting a man that you are purely entertaining for curiosity purposes spend so much like a full day of labor on you you really think that you deserve a full day of this man's labor when you're you know you're gonna friend zone him come on be merciful <laughs> she should honestly find someone who she's truly interested in exactly i i'm a big believer that women should pursue as well they should Get, get a taste of it, you know? Women need to get out there and take their emotional licks as well. See what it's like when you go for the one that you think that you deserve and you see that it's not so easy. <laughs> we, we really got to figure that out, okay? Because a lot of these people, they, they choose to only date the men who approach them first and then they choose to, like, pick the best of those. Like, you could, would probably have a lot more success if you also put your best foot forward. But I don't know. That's just me. I'm still a believer that we're not simply prizes by virtue of existing. And I that's not a fun belief to have, so I get why not everybody is on board to join me in that. <laughs> I think all three showing up on the next date would be hilarious. Do you guys remember that one chick who she like basically um, speed ran Tinder and like swiped yes on as many dudes as possible and then invited every single one of them to a date in the same spot and like had all these people show up and then she was like, all right, now whoever thinks you deserve me the most, like prove it and literally no one was down for that shit show <laughs> i think it was also um she ended up getting like fined for improper assembly in a public space as well like she actually did get in a little bit of trouble for that if i remember correctly i'll have to look up that video maybe do a video on that too Okay, let's move on to our next story. This one, what man, I actually had to like go on a little bit of a goose chase for this story because I found it um, and then she like completely rewrote the story, but then I found that she had posted the original story to a different subreddit, so I found the original story. So that's great. There's been a lot of updates, but I'm just gonna go over the the very basic story that she posted so this was in like relationships and parenting now it's in like legal and this is minor stepdaughter called the cops on me cop made me leave home that i own with my husband okay so we have the author of the story is a 30-year-old female. She has her own daughter from a previous relationship who is 15. And she has a stepdaughter who is 17. She's married to her husband who shares custody with the biological mother of the stepdaughter. Okay. Uh, now, I think we can all agree that, you know, when you're a kid in a blended home, you'll probably have 
a few more emotions than the average bear, especially when you're a teenager being introduced to a new parent. Usually a time for a lot of conflict, right? And that seems to be what happened in this story. So, since my stepdaughter has been around 12 or 13, her behavior has been atrocious, and my husband allows it because he's afraid of her mom. I should also include I am a mixed-race female, whereas my husband and his daughter are white. This doesn't really pl play a role um, at all, except for when she insists that she thinks it does in the rest of the story, but I'm just going to read that for you because she felt the need to include it. Um, I also want to touch on the subject, too, of fathers who share custody being more lenient with their child due to their fear of the other parent. That's a thing. Uh, it's definitely a thing. And sometimes, sometimes dads are more lenient, not even because they're afraid of the other parent, but just because they're allowed so little time with the child that they're just not going to be the most disciplinary. There are a lot of dads that are like, if I'm only going to get four days a month with this kid, no, I'm not going to make them clean their room. I'll do it during the 25 other days that they're not here. You know what I mean? There's a lot of parents with that mindset. I can't fully say that I blame them, but this phenomenon that she's experiencing, I fully believe it. Um, And I, I've, I've definitely seen this in like step parent forums where they're like, I'm trying to discipline my child and it's hard to do so when my husband disciplines his other child differently. This can happen. Okay, I can see issues there. Okay, back to the issue. She's proven time and time again she can't be trusted to be left home alone, which is what brings us to this situation. This past Wednesday night, I was going to church with my daughter. Usually, stepdaughter would go to her mom's, but her mom is out of town. I told stepdaughter she didn't have to go to church. She could sit in the car, but she wasn't going to stay home alone. Fair enough. She gave an attitude and told me I couldn't make her do anything. I told her no, but it's my house too. I told her fine. We'll just stay home then because I don't trust you. She told me I was annoying her and making her agitated. She pretty much told me to GTFO and get out of the house. I sat down and said, no, you know the rules. Oh, man. So right now we've got a situation where we got a teenage stepdaughter telling her stepmom that her stepmom needs to get out of the house. Um... No. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny to me. But I've got to imagine tons and tons of parents have been in the situation. Please say in the chat if you've ever gone through something similar. Very Dr. Phil vibes. My mom actually positioned this to me like very early on when she knew that I was dating a father. She was like, well, what are you going to do if that boy ever says, you can't boss me around. You're not my real mom. I'm like, That's not a real argument, though. I'll be like, easy your teacher isn't your real mom, your principal isn't your real mom, a police officer isn't your real mom, your coach isn't your real mom, your boss at your job isn't your real mom. Like, there are going to be a lot of people in this world <laughs> that are not your real mom who you should still respect and, and hold their opinion to some regard. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a no-brainer. I personally haven't gotten into quite... This level of defiance, I'm very pleased to say I have a pretty respectful relationship with all my kids for now. <laughs> Lord knows we're not 17 yet. We got a couple of years. But of course I would not. What? Who's going to leave the house? Are you kidding me? Your 17 year old goes, you need to get out of here. Hell no, I don't. What would y'all do in this situation? I would discipline her. How? How are you going to discipline her? This is a tricky one. As you guys are sharing your comments, I will continue. She told me she called the police because this was her dad's house and she wanted me to leave her alone. I said, okay, we'll see what the cops say. I thought that they would come. I'd explain that I own the house as well and that they'd leave. 
what happened was the total opposite. The cop pulls up and my stepdaughter runs out. I tried to say I'm the adult and the homeowner, but was immediately shut down. Cop told me, yeah, I'll talk to you in a minute. I don't know exactly what stepdaughter said, but when the cop did speak to me, I tried to explain that she couldn't be trusted over and over. She's still a minor. But the cop told me she was my husband's minor, not mine. So quick pause on the story. This is true. Uh, this is like the very interesting, unique world of family court and custodialship is just because you marry a custodial parent doesn't give you any custody, okay? So even if my husband had sole custody, I'm not a custodial parent of his son. I have no rights to that child whatsoever. I have no opinion in the courtroom. I have no say in child support, nothing like that. Same for any like stepdads who try to like act big and tough and be like, I'm the real dad. Now you have no legal rights. Like that guy is like just a buddy as far as the law is concerned. Just, just another guy in the street and the child can be taken away from you because you are not a parent with custodialship. That's the interesting way of it. However, this is not me agreeing with the police officer's decision here. Holy crap. I had to cough real quick. Okay. Anyway, the cop told me she was my husband's, not mine. The cop told me I needed to take my daughter and go to church or somewhere so everyone could cool off for a while. I told him, absolutely not. This is also where it gets weird with family court stuff, is like every cop they send out to handle issues like this is going to handle it differently. It's going to be a snowflake of a situation every time. Sometimes they choose to like flare out their chest and try to enforce something. Other times they just admit like we have nothing going on here. Other times like this they'll give you like the runaround, give you so much weird information. Like well actually you have to do a back handspring and spit in your back left pocket. Like wait what? Th that is definitely not in the court order. And apparently that's what this cop is trying to do. He's like, well, what you really need to do is go to church. Like, uh, n no. Like, <laughs> if you don't handle this right now, she's going to be seeing Jesus somewhere, dude. Like, let's figure this out. It is arrogant. I agree, chat. I told him absolutely not. My name is on the deed, same as my husband's. Cop told me I was obviously making my stepdaughter anxious and wound up and that I needed to leave her alone. I told him she's a minor in my home. He kept reiterating I needed to leave. I tried to call my husband, but no answer. The cop finally told me either I take my daughter and go somewhere for a few hours or we would have problems. I told him this is my house. He said I can't prove it, but stepdaughter has proof. I don't know what that would be. If she's 17, then the legal address is going to be on her license probably he might she might have shown him the license and then maybe she maybe her name is on the deed but her legal address is elsewhere the the stepmoms perhaps the stepmoms driver's license shows a different address look we got landlords everywhere okay you can own multiple pieces of land maybe that was it the is a mess. I find him taking the car keys, or I find her taking her car keys and her phone, and I don't want to come home. Oh, wait, no, I see, I see. Sorry, this was written weird. So the stepmom grabs her car keys and phone, tells the cop that she doesn't want to come home and find some random man in the house as she has in the past. Um... Oh, okay. The stepmom was trying to grab the stepdaughter's keys and phone. So she's like, okay, we'll leave, but we're taking her phone because we're paying for all of them. Which... Mixed feelings on. Um, 
I don't know if that was like part of the agreement. Like typically when you give a gift, it's not mutually understood that that gift can be taken away at any time. However, when it's a privilege, like a phone, oftentimes there is the agreement between parent and child that, hey, if you are misusing this privilege, it can be revoked at any time. So if that was the case, okay, then you knew what was up when you let your stepmom buy you a phone. You could have worked at the local Dairy Queen and paid up, saved up for your own phone. And if you knew that that was the agreement, you got to just allow it. But the cop is like, no. She gets to keep her phone. She gets to keep her car keys, which, like, this teenager is not paying for either of those things. But the cop is like, no. It's Lord of the Flies now. The children rule. I told my daughter to go get in the truck. The cop said, maybe drop my daughter off at her dad's. I told him, okay, then she can go back in the house because my husband is her dad. <laughs> I honestly thought he'd leave, but no, he hung around and told me I had one last chance to go. The last thing I heard him say was that he told stepdaughter to call the police department if I ever gave her any more trouble. He told me when I came back, I needed to be civil. He told stepdaughter if I took her keys or her car, she could report them as stolen. This is when she ends it by saying, I feel like I was racially profiled. Again, there's nothing in the story to insinuate that race is a factor, but it could be. I wasn't there. When I, it would also, you know, obviously, again, you have a dark skinned mom and a white child. History has shown there are many people who would feel some type of way about that and maybe mistreat them, so definitely can't rule that out. Um, when I came home, stepdaughter had ordered food and was watching TV. I just walked past her. My husband told me I should have backed off when she said she wanted to stay home. Now, anytime I open my mouth, I get, don't upset me or I'll call the police with a smug smile. She's asking, but of course I am not able to truly answer. I cannot give legal advice. She's asking, what are my legal op options? Can I sue? Can you sue your stepdaughter for manipulating the police into kicking you out of your own house? I don't think so. Tragically, I don't think this woman has any options. That's, that's a very stupid cop giving that daughter the permission to call the cops whenever she feels. Yeah, dude, again, I wasn't there, but I'm like, dude, what's going on with this cop, man? Like, why is he being so nice to this kid? That's, you know... I would say the dad is might be the problem here. Again, there's a lot of tonality that we're missing. This woman could have had a lot more of an attitude. But the dad saying, oh, well, as soon as she wanted to stay home, you should have just left it. Like, look, if your teenager has proven time and time again that they should not be left home alone, them's the ropes you have certain privileges at certain houses and like sorry your mom's out of town but like this is what you're stuck with okay it's not a crazy rule and it makes me feel like there's a chance that her mom is also enabling this we've all seen that trope of the the kids who start acting out more and more because one parent who just wants to be seen favorably by the child enables all of their misbehavior, especially when it makes them lash out at the parent, aka their ex, who they don't like. Clearly the situation's pretty complicated. Apparently though, based on the comments, there are some options. Apparently you can file eviction papers against a minor? Is that true? That's crazy. Can I file eviction papers against a minor?
let's see. Here we go. How do you, yeah, I can't find any answers on if you're legally allowed to evict a child. Minor defendants, kids are being named in evictions. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> oh man. That's interesting. I so I don't think they're supposed to. I think that you can file it and you can be swiftly rejected for one. So I don't think this woman's attempt at kicking out her stepdaughter is going to work. I think she might have to to live with this demon child to be honest. That sounds like a nightmare. And look, this is a lot coming from me because Typically, when I hear stories, I tend to side with the child almost nine times out of ten. Almost ten times out of ten, truly. And while I often tend to, you know, feel some sympathies for step-parents, I also know, because I've seen firsthand, how many step-parents really do wrong by their stepkids. There are very few people who should be step-parents in the world. I hate to say it. There are very few people who should be parents in the world, right? Most people are just not, not ready. Not to say that you will not ever be ready, but there are a lot of people who need a lot more love and support before they're ready. And a lot more people who need a lot more life experience before they're ready to try and love someone else's child as their own. A lot of people just are not healed enough. And in this situation, this woman seems to be fine. I I really don't see anything that the mother has done wrong. Like, I get what it's like to be a teenager and not want to go to church and want to hang out with your friends and be annoyed. But, like, as much as I was that teenager, you are never going to catch me calling cops on my mama. Of course, I've never had a stepmom. Who knows? In my deepest sense of assholery, maybe I would have called the cops up my stepmom. But I hope that she would grows to resent that in life. That's so extra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to read this comment because this is 1000% true. So Benjamin, thank you so much for sharing this. If you're a stepdad and you aren't advocating for the dad to get time with his kids, you are a shitty stepdad. bad person, bad parent, you are not a good advocate for that child. If you are helping to facilitate kicking out a perfectly fit, capable, and active father from a child's life, just so that you can try and play white knight, save a hoe, like, correct. You are a shitty stepdad. Congrats. I big agree. Big agree. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm curious to know what the rest of their agreement is. It sucks because I really don't think she has much recourse. The best she can do, in my opinion, from from just a parenting standpoint, would be to continue to revoke privileges. And to put it that way, like, look, you can choose at this point pretty much. Like, you're 17, you can drive. You can choose if you want to come here, come to your mom's. If she'll open the door for you, great. Like, But if you want to be here... Anytime you're in a person's home, it doesn't matter if you're related by blood or they are just a stranger, you respect their rules. Plain and simple. This has nothing to do with my relationship to your dad, my relationship with you, and this has everything to do with, like, these are just the rules that everyone has to follow. Blood or not, that's how it is. And just hope for the best, man. Hope that that kid doesn't turn out, like, psycho and chop you up into little tiny pieces of stepmom. <laughs> so she can hope. <laughs> wow, it used to make my wife mad when I would tell her that her son needed to spend time with his dad. That's the kind of problems I like men starting in their relationships, Charles. I'm so glad that you did that. I, and I hope one day she, like, looks back at that and sh she thinks about that as one of the reasons of, like, that's exactly why I marry Charles. 
I really hope she thinks that. I hope she's like looking back at life and she's like, I didn't, I do not like my ex. That dude really gets on my nerves, but his son, his child loves him. And this man that I married has such a good heart that he has forced me to see that. And I appreciate that for him. I really hope she can think that someday. If she doesn't already. <laughs> yeah, not Lizzie Borden, dude. <laughs> You can tell she watches a lot of true crime when. All right, next story. We did a little bit of dating. We did a little bit of parenting. Now we have some, a newly engaged couple, very young, early, like just starting off their 30s. Uh, they're having some relationship troubles. Um, before we start this, guys, what is a good YouTube-friendly word for the intimate act of using the, um, the, the, um, the face orifice? <laughs> Give me a really funny youtube friendly term for this give me something that won't my of all the times for my husband to come yell something in here um let's say like slurping back the glizzy but then it's uh we want to do something for the ladies too so like glizzy guzzling and um T taste testing uh, dinner time licking the lolly all right get glizzy guzzling and lollipop licking that's what we're gonna call it keeping it pg over here <laughs> sampling the taco dip no okay no i have a rule this is just in my relationship i take it or leave it every relationship is different I have a rule in my relationship that we cannot call the lady parts things that use meat or fish analogies. Um, my strongest preferences are floral, um, cute stuff like kitty, uh, or like pastry is all appropriate. Although I will make a hard exception for wizard sleeve. It's not gross. It's not cute, but it's not gross. So it flies under the radar. But I'm like, please don't call it a taco or like beef. I love red meat, don't get me wrong. But I would just prefer something a little more, a little more sweet. Anyway, back to the problem at hand. No flesh cave will, no flesh cave. Bad. No. <laughs> Bad. I mean, it is. That's what it is. It's just that I've played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons to where I don't, look, the flesh caves that I've been in in Dungeons and Dragons involved teeth. No vagina dentata, please. Listen, no. you had to use, you <laughs> me use the term flesh cavern for a month straight when I made that dungeon for them, so... Yeah, it's it's just been ruined. Can't go back. The problem at hand. How do I, 30-year-old male, explain to my fiancé, 29-year-old female, why I'm upset that she won't guzzle my glizzy? My fiancé, one year engaged, three years together, has refused to guzzle glizzy for over six months. She says it's gross and she will never do it again. However, she needs lollipop licking and digital st stimulation to climax, so I do it for her. It's starting to feel like our life has devolved into me satisfying her and then me being an afterthought. I've tried to talk to her, but she thinks that glizzy guzzling is demeaning. Okay, to be fair, one sounds cuter than the other as I say it out loud, but both are things that you should be proud of and rock like a champion. I don't think pleasuring your partner is demeaning. 
One time when I told her she wasn't satisfying me, she said, well, now you know how women feel. That's great, except that has nothing to do with our relationship. You're just being selfish. I finally told her that I think it's a deal breaker if she doesn't reciprocate. She said, breaking up over glizzy guzzling is stupid. But I said, it's because of your lack of interest in my needs. I'm not going to beg or withhold from my end. How do I explain to her that her selfishness is destroying our relationship? Edit, since a lot of people have asked, no, there is not a hygiene issue. That was the first thing that I asked. Okay, fair enough. Um, she said, nothing happened six months ago that I'm aware of. She gagged once because she got a haircut, but that was a year and a half ago, probably. That'll happen. That'll happen. This is really, this is a very nuanced topic. This goes so many different ways. And I actually do think that there is a man out there for her. It's just probably not the man that she's engaged to. Okay, I, I've met a lot of people who are really interested in giving and have no interest in receiving like just similar to the way that she finds it gross i have met men who say that they find that gross themselves it's not a whole like wide sweeping load of them but sure there's some out there just like there are some people who are genuinely good with being someone's only partner and or being the partner to someone and having no other partners while they are open with others. There are people out there, not a whole lot, but if you are like, I want to sleep with other people, but have one person who's loyal to me, you can find it. It's like a rare, shiny Pokemon. Talk about something you got to grind for. That's what you got to grind for, is someone like that. But... This one's really tough because as much as we may or may not like to admit it, sex is a really important part of relationships. At least if you are sexually active. And I don't think very many couples at all sit down and talk to themselves over sushi about so how's our relationship going to function if one of us is no longer sexually active? When's the last time you had that conversation with a person? Pro probably never, really. I mean, you, it's certainly not something that a lot of people want to think about. But, and I guess in her case, it's not that she does not want to participate in any intimate act any longer. Just the one. Let's do a quick poll. I'm just curious. What in the chat, if you would proceed with the relationship, you could live without either glizzy guzzling or lollipop licking? You can do a bunch of other stuff. You can get creative. What in the chat, if you're like, this is my person. Sure, I could find someone who isn't worried about this, but they're not they don't have all these amazing other attributes that my person has i'm gonna stick with my person we will figure it out we will get creative two in the chat if you're like nope the glizzy must be guzzled the lollipop she needs more than one two three licks let me tell you one you could you could stay on that train two Hop it off. Sorry. Love you as a person. I hope you find someone great who does not ever need any ketchup or mustard on their glizzy. But this dog. <laughs> yeah, I can't do this. It's actually making me really want a hot dog. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Tons of ones. 
tons of ones, not much fun, but <laughs> y'all figure it out. A few twos, a few twos. Would you guys believe me if I told you I was a two in the past? I did. Yep, it was a long, long before TJ relationship was good on paper, but dude just did not want to even try. He was, like, worse than a straight girl trying to experiment in college, like, where they're, like, it's like licking an envelope, and they're just kind of like, I'm shy, like, I'm sorry, it's, that's not for me. Bless his heart. He's a good man, Savannah, and, like, there's, not everybody beats that, and that's fine. I would never, like, you know, dog on him outside of that. But it's a fact of the matter is, like, I'm team two, baby. <laughs> I would have to be Audi. <laughs> I don't know. With TJ, I would be a one, though. If something happened, if something happened to TJ, TJ's different. But if I'm just, like, if we're, if we're not, like, committed, committed. I think this is a scenario we would need to do. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally summoned TJ on that one. Thank you for that. <laughs> Somehow he's not sick. I do not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know either. See you soon. So we're freaks. Sounds like he's willing to compromise, but she isn't. Damn. Yeah, that's a rough one, buddy. I think a lot of people would be able to live with it, though. I don't think he will. I think he'll probably be like, nah. Nah. Because let's also talk about this. Do you think that it is inherently hypocritical of her that she often relies on lollipop stimulation to even enjoy the shared experience um but she won't reciprocate i don't necessarily me personally i don't necessarily think that that part is hypocritical because i i guess it all is a little bit i would say overwhelmingly no because Clearly, she's not going to feel demeaned if someone is pleasuring her. I don't know. I would say that both tasks, though, require almost... I would say that they're almost equal tasks. I would say that you have to perform for just as long to receive the final results in each. That's in fact actually why there's a fun little shape and number that people usually they just kind of like mesh it together so that they can just work the same shift, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a pretty equivalent exchange in my opinion. That's just me. This might be a controversial take that giving and receiving mouth stuff is a fair equal and equivalent exchange we we love to see it but the other the thing that i don't the real reason i don't think their relationship isn't gonna last is actually less to do with the act and less to do with any potential hypocrisy of her enjoying receiving versus refusing to deliver is the fact that she brings up very casually, that when he feels his needs are not being met, the complete and total pain of all women. She brings up a collective phenomenon, which I'm assuming she's referencing what they call the orgasm gap, which they say that women receive less pleasure overall during most experiences than men do. Um, but that that's not a problem that she personally is having that would be like 
<laughs> that would mean like if I told my husband like, hey, dinner will be ready when you get home. He comes home, I hadn't cooked dinner. And he's like, oh, I'm hungry. And I was like, now you know how starving children in Africa feel. Like, I guess, but I don't know what that has to do with us. <laughs> kind of out of left fields to be honest with you that it's so crappy because when you what that tells me is that she that's just like that's probably not the first time she's done that it's probably not going to be the last time that she's going to weaponize greater phenomenons that occur to general populations of people and then apply it to self-victimize that's a learned and practiced behavior dude it's Probably not going to keep up with that one. There's still time. 30? You're still so young. You're a baby in this world. All right. This one is, uh, I hope you guys haven't been fully sapped of hearing about Christmas-related stuff. We still have a slightly belated Christmas story. Uh, keep in mind, I was collecting these stories, like, a couple weeks ago, back when I didn't think I would be hit by another plague. But, you know, God gives his strongest soldiers the toughest battles. What can I say? <laughs> I'm gifted. <laughs> so we've got another Christmassy one. I definitely agree the all-woman remark is another red flag. Big, big aggery. For our next story, am I the a-hole for not putting my partner's names on Christmas gifts for our kids? Ooh. I almost want to ask your preliminary thoughts just off the bat, especially because we are coming out of a Christmas season where there has been a lot of viral placement on moms make the magic happen and i don't know if this is your guys feed or just mine because i'm a mom and this is what they want to feed me but for the it seems like for the past few years there's been a heavy focus every christmas season on kind of the social media world reminding fathers they're like hey women plan and do everything for christmas you better not mess this up don't leave her stocking empty because moms are the magic I'm pretty spoiled and that my husband cannot help but go like full ornaments to the wall for Christmas like is super super fully invested. I think a lot of dads are but a lot of dads aren't. A lot of moms aren't as well. Sometimes there is one parent that is putting in a little to a lot more effort than the other. So Today we're going to be hearing about a man uh, whose wife is actually kind of the absentee magic provider of the season, so to say. Um, and whether or not they should be punished for it. So let's take a look. So this is a 45-year-old male writing about his 45-year-old female partner. He said, my partner, again, has bought nothing for our children from 11 to 20 for Christmas, but insists that her name goes on everything that I've planned and bought over the last few months because they should be from us. She's had every opportunity to buy gifts. She has her own job, but contributes zero to bills and living costs, but that's another story. Now six days out is making excuses like Christmas has come out of the blue. I said, I'm not doing this. Go find something this week. I haven't outright told the kids the situation yet, but they're smart enough to know what's going on. Again, at best, she'll buy confectionery or a gift card or maybe take them shopping after Christmas with money they get, not hers. I don't think it's fair or honest for her to claim credit for caring enough to buy thoughtful gifts ahead of time, especially when I know she won't contribute anything toward anything either. Am I the a-hole for refusing to put her name on everything, or should I protect her in the eyes of our kids? So, 
So ordinarily, I feel like my gut would be to say, well, of course you put your partner's name on them, you know, no matter who did it, it's, you know, about the magic of the season and all that good stuff. I don't know about you guys, I'm sensing that this is not just about the Christmas gifts. There is a much deeper underbelly to what's causing the real resentment in this marriage. And it is not just the Christmas gifts, it is a consistent pattern of lack of reciprocity, lack of effort. You know, it's not always cheating or gambling or addiction or laying hands on someone that ends a marriage. A lot of times it's just the much quieter, much slower, and much more painful death of reciprocation and effort. Quite frankly, that, that's good timing. Thank you so much, Cameron. I mean, all Christmas presents are from Santa, not the parents. Problem solved. That's fair. If you're if you're using Santa, then look, obviously the problem would be solved. Maybe that's what she was relying on all these years. But the 20-year-old, I don't know, the 20-year-old could play along with Santa. But they didn't say anything about Santa. Not everybody follows. Not everybody obeys the Christmas god of Santa. So they might not actually participate in such a thing. It might just be from the parents. And then even some people who do Santa, what they'll do is Santa will provide some of the gifts so they have some fun, but then the more expensive stuff is from the parents so that we don't have, like, class issues amongst the children. Because, like, then you have Kenny asking, like, why did Jimmy's Santa get him a Nintendo Switch? And I got this dollar store Yahtzee, like, Especially when that kid was, like, way more of an a-hole than me. How did this happen? Make the cards. His parents are richer. That's why Santa gives him more stuff. Make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. I Look, buddy, there's an, easy, there's an easy out here. If you don't want to share the glory with this person who's not putting in anything to the class projects... There, there is an eject button on marriage. It's very costly. And I think that's the thing is like, I think this dude is, it's not the Christmas presents that are his problem. It's the fact that he's trapped in a time sunk fallacy versus a dangerous family court system. But I think that's are more in his favor than he thinks, man. I think he just needs to talk to a good lawyer. Look, here's the thing. Lady has a job. However, in family court, oftentimes, if you can prove that your partner agreed to a certain lifestyle condition. So she can say, dude, it's been seven years of him paying all the bills. Yes, I have a job, but he has set me up to expect this life. Then if he demands a divorce, they can say, you're just trying to get out of this agreement. No, buckaroo. Like, you made a lifetime commitment to her, and this is what you've historically provided, we're going to order that now. So he's kind of in a catch-21 here situation where he knows that he's going to probably be made to pay for her lifestyle for some significant portion anyway. He's probably just fallen victim to staying for the kid syndrome, to be honest, and is now this is the problem he's focusing on because the rest of it he just loads on the many burdens that he carries on his back. Damn, that got dark. I hope the next one we cover is a lot more cheeky because I didn't mean to get that dark. Sorry, I just get really real. But then coupled with the fact that I'm sick didn't make that any fun. That was not a fun pill to swallow at all. There was no spoonful of sugar taking that one down. I just went right into the grim realities, the darkest. There was absolutely no relish on that glizzy that that was just like swallowing the glizzy hole i raw dogged that truth bomb <laughs> i think that's a good segue that's a good segue
So this one, this next one's uh, one of our other topics of the day, which this is a really challenging one. And I feel like a lot of you, I feel like so many of you are going to have different opinions on this, but I'm going to force you to pick between two sides. And that is the question of, am I wrong? to tell my kids that my wife cheated. This one's kind of tricky. I don't think I'm going to read the full one. I think that I'm just going to... Nah, I'll read it. I'll read it. It's not that long. There were a few like it. The one that I originally got was different, but then they deleted it. So I had to find another one on the same topic because I wanted to cover this. Because I'm sure someone watching right now has gone through this. It's a very, that's another very depressing mathematical game of percentages is how many people experience infidelity in marriage, especially while having children. But it's a lot. It's a lot. And when you decide to call it quits, if you decide to call it quits, some people, so you get a tough pill to swallow, they just swallow it choose forgiveness every day instead. Others, they choose to end it, and when it ends, someone's got to tell the kids that it's ending. They're gonna want to know why, and if you're the one who has been accosted or wronged or betrayed, oh, you gotta want to tell them. You gotta want to tell them. There's no way that if you've just given your all to a person, your whole life, you've invested so much money, time, you've been so vulnerable with them, you've supported them through everything, and then at the very end of it, like, th they betray you? Especially if you find out that it's been going on for a long time. Now, you have to uplift your whole life, change it everything and you want me to tell the kids it was a mutual agreement i don't know if i could do it so before we even get into this i just want like to do a preliminary poll one if you don't th if you you know what if you think it's okay to tell the kids Maybe not, like, completely free of any wrong, but, like, one, if you're, like, yeah, the kids deserve to know. Two, if you are, like, don't tell those kids, man. No one, those kids don't need to know. I'm curious. So far, a lot of ones. If I, if, like, there was, like, a, an applause meter, so far, the ones are, like, the loudest. Kids are not stupid. It really messes me up how many cheaters include the kids in their affairs. I've heard of this so many times where the person will not only cheat, but they'll bring the kid around the person they're cheating with. How could you do that? Wow, it's literally all ones. Okay, okay. Well, then on that note, there is literally no controversy, nothing to write home about. We all agree. Tell them kids. Tell them mom. Tell them dad. You made the bed, we're showing the kids the bed. And a three from Will. Thank you, Will. <laughs> All right, here's the story. Ten days ago, I just busted my wife of 19 years. That's just 19 years married, by the way. There's been an additional six years of dating. So, quarter of a century together. Just caught her having an affair. I saw her acting strange with her phone, started questioning her while we were on a romantic vacation together. She broke down and told me that she has been having an unsafe affair, meaning unprotected, with another man for the last two years. During the talk, she gave me her phone and I looked at the messages from him. Oh, brother, no! Oof. Don't do it! Look, truly, please... I, I hope and I pray that you are actually never in a situation to have to take this advice. 
But God, if you ever are in a situation where you have just been cheated on, you know you've been cheated on and you know that there are messages, don't do it. Just believe it. Just believe that it happened and was probably gross, but you can never unread it. You can never unsee it. You are going to put a world of pain on yourself. And you're not going to listen to me. If the time ever comes to, you're going to be like, I remember Devigate saying this, but I'm still going to read it because I have to know. You don't have to know. You don't. The truth is the same, whether you have the details or not. You don't have to know. Okay? I'm, I'm just saying, it's rough. It's, you're choosing a lot of pain if you keep reading you you can read one even and be like yep that's an affair and then back out you don't have to keep reading it's like stabbing yourself over and over and over again every message you keep reading just so you know but he reads them uh in addition to the affair part this is always the worst kind of affair when not only are they having like this full blown romantic passionate like love affair but they're talking crap about you too mm -mm. no there's there's like some of those people who they're like ah oh, i just can't keep my hands off you but you need to know i love my wife and it's slimy but they never actually talk bad about their partner, right? And then there's the people who do it and talk bad about their partner. And it's like, you're the worst. You're the worst person. So she's not only doing this for two years after this man has committed a lifetime to her, but he's she's also talking about how much of an a-hole he is, talking crap about his parenting. So he bails on vacation, he flies home alone. He files for divorce two days later. He's an emotional wreck. His kids are a 15-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy. He's asking, should I tell them? He says that his lawyer has advised that he does not. His lawyer advises that that should not be the way the kids find out. Regina George meme, so you agree, the kids are going to find out. At that point, then why not have it be from the person whose story it is to tell? Cameron again with the super thanks. Thank you so much. I'm so glad it reads it to me because I, I think it depends works entirely on the age of the kids. I think younger children shouldn't have that yeah. problem while older kids deserve the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you on that one. There's a there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, nah, this is you know, you are children, you don't get to know this ancient lore until a certain age cap. You know what I'm saying? But twelve and fifteen Ah, uh, that's a tough one. What age is the magic number to drop the bombshell like that? I feel like if I was unfortunately put in that situation, I feel like I'd ha I wouldn't end up telling them. Just for the same reason you don't tell your kids about all of the different wars going on or horrific crimes in the world. It's not that you're trying to shield them from the harsh realities it's just there's a time and a place and there's a real magic to the preservation of childhood for as long as possible and and when you really value that childhood innocence sometimes you put that above your own desire for vengeance you know what i mean Because at the same time, it's going to make your life a whole lot more chaotic if these kids start acting out. There's a time when they're adults. You can wait it out. 
to to tell them the truth of that situation. It's tough though, especially because if oh thank you for the stars. Let me see if it says something. Oh, I can't read it. I don't know if it's reading it out loud. I'm so sorry. I missed the message. Um, but the type of person who is already creating a defensive narrative to shield themselves from any criticism, who's now saying, well, they're an a-hole, they're an a-hole, they're doing that, like I said, as a protective cushion. So that when people find out about the truth and what they've done, they can at least say, oh, well, he was an a-hole, so he probably deserved it. You know, the, these people who try to con control the narrative, it's unlikely that she's going to stop this narrative campaign at the new boyfriend. Very likely, she would continue it with the children. And so at that point in before you know what i mean like who gets to it first like because if you wait too long she could potentially eradicate your entire relationship with the children before you get a chance to get two words in edgewise and by that time who's to say you're even to be believed because the well has been so deeply poisoned right i yeah let me read this comment it would be more like your mom and I decided it would be better to live in different houses than your mom and I got a divorce because she cheated on me. One of those is they're both going to come with quite a deal of emotional turmoil. Don't worry, your child will have no shortage of sleepless nights. But at least you can kind of taper off that emotional edge if you just... Simply leave out some details, and it's not like protecting a villain, it's protecting the kids. You know what I mean? You don't have to never tell them. You just have to not tell them all their kids. Okay. Mull all this over. Let's take a quick, like, five-minute break. Uh, I'm just gonna refill my tea, refill my water, uh take a quick bathroom break, and then I'll come back. We have a couple more stories. And then since the the live is live in and we're having fun, we might do a couple live reacts to some videos as well. There was one in particular that I started watching with my husband that I had a reaction to um, about men. Uh, so if you guys want to do some live react stuff after a couple more Am I the A-Holes, definitely leave in the comments for me to read to come back to in just a few minutes. It won't be a very long break, maybe just like five minutes and then we'll, we'll BRB. So let me know.
Hello, hello. Thank you for allowing me to refresh my mug here. Let's see. How is the chat doing since I abandoned them? Aw, you guys love each other, even though there's like three separate channels all in here, tons of them not even knowing what the other one is talking about. Somehow, you're just, you knew to party without me. I love that for all of us. All right. Let's see it. Let's see if I make it through this to to get to the video that I'll eventually go over with you guys. But hopefully we make it to today. That mug is awesome. Uh 10 points if to everybody who identifies where this mug is from. Who's on it? Otherwise, if you simply enjoy the F word, this was a really funny mug to have when my daughter first started learning how to read because she, like, I would watch her start sounding things out around the house and she gets to the mug and she goes, mother. <laughs> Didn't say it. I just watched her read it. <laughs> All right. If if you're new here or just swinging in, we've been reading Am I the A-hole stories and reacting to them. So, you know, just chill cozy times. I'm um once again sick. So, you can you can soak in my recovery energy um while I'm sick here in my heart. I'm like fighting my way out of it. I believe in me. It's time to believe in me. <laughs> We're gonna get out of here. The mug does look like messy. You're getting closer. You're getting closer. Imagine like a fictional side. All right, that's enough of that. We have another story. Okay. I call this one the escape room story. So... I'm sure by now a lot of you at least have like a general gist of what an escape room entails. Um, I actually worked at one when I was younger. Pretty fun when they like first started popping up. I felt like I was very fun and cheeky at that job. Uh, but essentially the room is designed in such a way that you have to kind of solve a series of riddles and clues in order to figure out how to escape the room. So there are a few different styles. There's some really cool quirky ways that it happens. Usually it involves some kind of... Thank you for the 500 stars. All right, I'm going to read this one. I'm determined. Hope you feel better. Sorry. I got to make that bigger. Okay, wow, that was a dad sneeze there. For your 500 stars, I give you a dad sneeze on the house for your 500 stars. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. Um, but, yeah, and um, in my time working at them, you know, there, like I said, there's usually, like, a fun ending. Like, the door will swing open. But there is like a certain percentage that are just not going to win and it's designed that way they're supposed to be hard and this also gives the games their replayability for the escape rooms um and and it's also true too that if there is an in-person clue giver so to say in the room with you they can often greatly affect whether or not you win facts of the matter. If there was like a day that like we knew we had to get some losses up, I'd be like, you are not getting any hints. And if they were like, no one's been winning lately, I would be like, we're getting through this together, y'all. I will drop the, the most clear cut stuff while still making you think that you used all your brain power. There's a lot that goes into them, okay? Another detail that I think is important to understanding escape rooms is that you're usually in a, a fairly big group. Like we, it's usually more fun and the way that they try to organize it 
is that you're in a big group. It's just the best that way. In fact, there would be times where if there was like only two people in the room, like we would offer cheaper tickets so that people would join. So it'd be more fun. Like basically at the end of the day, I don't recommend doing an escape room with just two people. I could see it getting really stressful and like under way more of a time constraint. Whereas like if you're in there with like four other people, you, your partner and like four other strangers, you guys are going to be having way more fun of a time. I promise you. So just getting into it. Another little dadvocate nugget of wisdom. If you're taking someone on a date, Escape rooms, super good idea. S escape rooms where it's just the two of you, I not ideal. Not ideal if you can help it. But if you can't help it, then, like, you get to find out what kind of person they're like if and when you lose, you know? A win's a win. So let's get into this escape room date failure. Now, this one is a second date. I feel like that matters. What do you think of when you think of a second date? Sorry, I know I always like start trailing off, but I feel like a second date is so important. It's kind of like, you know, it, isn't that like basically second base? And then third base is like, we all know what that is. But like the second date, you got to like seal this deal, brother. Like, I feel like it's important, babe. What is your opinion on second dates? Do you remember our, can you come in here and ask, tell me if you remember what our second date was? What mug do you have? Let's show off our mug. I'm, I'm using a spider mug because I had a lot of coffee and I need something tall. Aww. I love spiders. Um, man, our second date. I don't remember. I don't either. remember what our I'm second because the right thing on. was like a lot of our dates were just like hanging out because we were both like over dating. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's hope for you guys. Um, we were just kind of. Oh, <laughs> the thing was, we were very much like over the rigmarole, uh, because we, but we were unique in the sense we did that like date. we went and got ice cream. Well, no, but here's the thing. But we like, all just walked around. But this is the thing: is we we were around. forced to only be able to communicate for the first month which i think that is kind of people's first and second dates so by the time we were able to physically be around each other just because of where we were geographically it was like it was like we just needed to hang out because we didn't didn't need to do all this stupid like first second third date stuff because we had already spent 30 plus days just only being able to talk to one another because i was in florida you were in michigan so it was like that's just funny though. I spent all this time hyping up the second date and then like here we are, you know, ten years later and neither of us even remember. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's, it's, what I'm saying is it's just and that's a good story though. That's but what I'm saying is lesson. it was just us hanging out. And that's what I think, honestly. I think that's what the second date should oh, be. Oh, hold on, we have to emphasize we weren't over dating. Like we were not like dating each other too much we were both over we were like oh we were like, like oh it's so <laughs> we were just like it's so neither there was a break in the role we're like hey, this seems this seems so there was just like a whole like okay and then i asked this person out and if they say yes then we have to pick somewhere and i should definitely like try and like glean from our conversation where's the best place that's going to be to where they want to agree to a second date and it's like there's this whole kind of like chess game that goes on when you're trying to actually date somebody but because we were literally compelled we had no other option in terms of how to be able to speak to one another in that first month that it's like we got a lot of that that awkward stuff in terms of like a, a traditional second or first date out of the way but personally i think that a, a successful and how you should be approaching a second date period is it's still exactly what we did is you should just be the first date should never be i hate when people are like first date i'm gonna i'm gonna spend so much money i'm gonna do all this it's like do you have any idea of the standard you just set for every single fucking date from here on out the first date should be a coffee date or like hey 
where's your favorite restaurant? Or do you have a place that you like to get snacks? Go to somewhere that they like, somewhere they suggest, if you're a guy, somewhere they suggest they like, so they're in control and like the confidence is is in their ballpark. And then just talk with them. And then have a plan for after the initial like meet cute. The the standard that thing that you were talking about like you just set the standard for all future dates like that is something that I was heavily thinking about in a previous story that we were covering where like this girl was talking about how like the every guy that she was dating was spending between 100 and 250 dollars on their dates and I was like oh my god she's gonna start thinking that like that's exactly that's what everyone spends like and then that's normal just to see if you like each other that's that's what I'm saying <laughs> is it's like it seems like and I, I it never got that crazy for you, but it was like you want to make a great first impression and it's like, but are you making too much of a first impression? And is that coming off to your potential partners as not necessarily desperate, but like, wow, this is a really big gesture. Is there and I feel especially in today's internet age where there's so many like cat like not like cat I mean catfish, but like people you just can't trust where they present a false something or other and they have a totally other separate life and you just hear all these stories and again i don't think that the percentage has risen i just think that we can all communicate we're learning each other's stories the percentage has stayed the same we're just all learning about it now but anyway is i think the first date is somewhere that whoever the person who asks the person out on the date the man generally <laughs> no not always not always you're I asking know. me out on the first date you're like i'm going to come to yeah, you in you Grand asked Rapids. for my number you asked for my friend to that's fine talk. but that's not the first date that's to talk that's, that's like to the... initiate conversation it's totally different there's all listen dude there's a whole like i said someone said rigmarole is a dumb whirl up there and i'm like i guess but it's the best world I that we knew got for it you were not gonna like that comment i was like Ooh, it's fine that hey they don't started. listen Listen, war. not everybody's perfect. I'm not going to judge someone simply on the fact that they don't like a great word. A date idea for a married couple. Man, eventually, uh, I'll think about it. Because the, the, the second date, Un- actually, yeah. Um, but let me see. I think the second date is if they like it. Because here's the thing. After you go to wherever the meet cute, that we're, we're, having, we're having a cup of coffee, you should... Now, as the person who asked them out, let's say you're in uh, a same-sex couple, then whoever asked out, regardless, the person you asked, ask if they have somewhere they'd like to go. I know you meant world. I'm, I'm, I'm being a silly little lad. You are being a silly goose. But once you have that, you as the person who asked them out on the date should then, if the other person who suggests the place isn't like, and then there's X, Y, and Z down the street or around the corner, or we could go here, you can then follow up and be like, okay cool, I was thinking maybe we could do this afterwards. Cool, now you've got a really casual first date and then you can go do something fun. You don't have to go on like a three-hour rock climbing expedition. So you're saying, you're like, I like you. Do you want to go on a date? They say yes, and then you ask them where they want to go? I ask them, okay, I was thinking of like coffee and tea. Do you have a favorite place or can I pick it out? Okay, give okay, them, okay. Them the... That's different then. Because I was going to say, if you... I don't think you understand. In modern dating, if you tell, like, ask them to put forth any effort into planning the first date, but you also have to plan exactly what they. No, do. it's it's not them planning. It's giving them the it's give it's basically showing that I'm holding your opinion and word at equal grounding with mine from the get go. It's so hey, I value your opinion, and in fact, you. I, I'm that's, throwing it. That's that, pretty good, Riz. Thank you, thank you. I, I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I bagged a pretty good one. So, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Um, and thank you for the sub. And then, would I, you like to come off of? I'm all right. Your I, I think the second date then is something <laughs> even more. I think the second date is almost something that you were planning to go to already, and now you just want to bring this person along. Do you it's want to like pick up my prescriptions. Well, yeah, exactly. Hey, you want to come? <laughs> do you want to like come to my nail salon appointment? Or it's like, hey, I was going to the the I was going to go to a, a festival or a fair. Do you want to come with me? Or I heard that there's this great so and so. Do you want to go see that? 
A woman would never invite you to her nail appointment. That's where she tells the random stranger everything about you. Could you admit, listen, if that was a power move, though, if she's like, I don't know, do you want to come to my Manny Petty? And you were like, <laughs> yes, queen. And she's like, oh, no. And then you're, because then you get and to. And he's, like, loving Because, him. yes, then you get to, like, you get to rub shoulders and elbows with you all of the girlies him. that they gossip with. Like, listen, my mom did the fashion stuff for years. Like, I know. I know all of like. I would definitely bring you with me to get my nails done. Dude, that'd be so much fun. Way more fun. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> here's would be a giga chat. Well, well here's it's I'm pretty thinking giga chats get Manny Patty. I'm, I'm thinking like in terms of this, like out here we are out in Grand Rapids. Like a great follow up would be okay. We went to this place. Second date, we're gonna go to Comedy Outlet Mondays, which is like a weekly improv comedy night that we have here. It's always really funny. It's always and I say that just because like. I, I helped start the damn thing, but it's like we also, it's established. It's something that's fun. It's literally next to like two breweries, and it's it's still they can meet you there. You can pick them up. They could pick you up if if that's the situation. But like whatever it is, it's it that's a non again. It's it's non-committal. It's still very casual. It's fun again. And then for the third day, they can be like, hey, I, I want to take you out for dinner. Or do you want to go see a play in dinner? And then that can be a little bit more formal. Because like you said, the third date is kind of like in today's day and age. Like if you get to the third date and there has been that's when it gets nothing to, beyond hand holding. That we would, that's what we were talking about. That's when it gets into like the $250 territory. And that's when we were like, kind of like. But anyway, we were about to get into someone's second date failure at an escape room. Mm. Are you do you want to grab a chair or I'll, I'll, are you gonna see, go back exactly the take them to yester dog if that's their thing we have different hot oh dog my God, places that's so funny we have different hot dog places we prefer but yes dog, dog would, is be, not the uh, would be it's not but it would be a potential option especially if you guys did do bar hopping let's say if she's like well what if she said i'm saying as a guy and i asked you out on a date and then we're like great and then we want to go on a second date and it's like oh i'm actually busy but my friends and I are meeting up at uh, Billy's in East Town. It's like fucking great. She here's the thing: if she invites you out with her friends, that's so much more of a green light for you to be like, she likes me enough. Yeah. To, to I that is, this is a true test. Hold well, on. Someone said first date is finding common ground. Second grade is sharing your date is sharing your interests. Third date is the other partner's interests. I don't think that's the way you should do it. I think second date. And first date it should be sharing each other's interests. You can't just take. I think you can share you everybody's interests. Interest. I feel like usually, in especially because people talk a lot, and I could be wrong. Maybe I'm totally off base here, but people I feel talk a lot online before they really hang out, or even if you know somebody through a friend beforehand, like you can. I, I feel like you can already kind of have an idea, like okay, she likes this. Like I knew that she liked stand up comedy. Like, I met her watching one of her stand-up sets at a friend's house, you know, um, completely in a non-romantic sense. No, you weren't doing it. We were watching it. We watched it at Amanda's oh, house. Oh, I see what you're saying. But it was like, uh, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I know that if I ask her out to a stand-up show, first of all, it's going to show her, I acknowledge her interests. I respect her interests at least enough to go and share them with her. And if... If it's bad, we can we can rag on them together. And if I don't know anything about stand-up comedy, I'm going to sit and listen to her splurge on something that I know she's interested in. It's like, I feel like it, it can't be like... And again, I like the idea of having like a strategy of first dates kind of for this, second dates for this. But it's also like... It, it's got to be treated more like a, a round in Dungeons & Dragons. Like every... Like, you did this, and then a lair action came up at the last minute, and you're like, well, my strategy that I had is different, but I'm just gonna, we can still I know, we got get so through this much together. Deeper into it than the story even goes. I'm an but... old man with my knees. Same. Same, dude. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for letting me talk for her. Yeah, we're gonna get into our escape room story. Natural, yeah, I agree. Natural 20 by the end of the first date, you're right. <laughs> That's the maximum riz. Now listen. The maximum riz. Now listen, if you're, if, and that's the thing, if you really know their interest, and she's like, yo, I don't tell a lot of people this, but I love like Dungeons and Dragons or something, 
unless you live like out in the boonies, like somebody said, there's probably a bar or some sort of like D and D get together that they you call might them be able. Arcades. A D and D around six second date. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's actually how that's I knew that TJ was like a committal person was when he was like, Oh yeah, if you want, you can join my Dungeons and Dragons group. Just so you know, we've been playing together for like two years already. I'm like Okay, okay, so the man can commit. Okay. I see you. <laughs> we made it to five and a half in that particular campaign. <laughs> yeah, what are we on now? Like how long have we had can you, oh, this I year, that, I was gonna name drop you this name February. Drop. This February will be my tenth year with Kenny at the table. That's Mike and I, I have been. Like, I feel like we've had some of these, and that's times. consistently. Mike left to go to California for two and a half years, but he had been playing. He was part of the first five year campaign, so Mike has been playing with us for like four. It would be like 16 years, but he was gone for two and a half. He was with us in our heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mike was with us in our heart. What if they don't want to go out, but they want to just be around you? Dude, okay, listen. As an ambivert and also as an Audi HD person who can like... I love yeah. going out to parties. I love like going crazy. I love tapping into that wild Irish face spirit in my heart. And just being like, we're going crazy! But then like... I can hit a hard wall for no reason whatsoever and want to go home. Or there could be a night where she'll be like, hey, um, I know it's Saturday, but do you just want to like... Like, I know we got a hotel and someone's babysitting the baby, but do you just want to like go get a bottle of wine and sit in our underwear for like two hours and fall asleep at like nine o'clock and like sleep in past 7 30 and it's like talk to me more like that mama <laughs> it's like it all depends <laughs> yeah you know yeah, i feel like it's kind of a it's a depending on the situation sort of thing oh that's cute sounds like a great evening exactly and so it's like if they just want to do that then it's like okay then that's their thing. Then that's their thing, and it's like maybe then there's someone We're who doesn't like marriage level though. You have to remember, like I understand that, but you if they're saying so many different things, shameless OTL rook plug. Thank you very much. And, yeah, you unlock so much more stuff once. You but that's also the thing is if you and this is another thing is I feel because we were kind of like the over dating thing in the sense of are you British because you colonized my heart. <laughs> oh, 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 that it's a funny joke, but it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> I'm not British, though. That um, that's 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 a pretty hilarious statement, though. That's funny as shit. That's my favorite pickup line that anyone. Has but ever used. it's oh man, <laughs> to me, I'm sitting here I going like, right when you're when you get to that point and everybody hits it, I feel you don't really hit it until you're a little bit later into your mid to late twenties. But it's like. That when I say over dating, just like the whole I don't like the exchange and the back and forth, and you've kind of been disillusioned to the like the expectations, and you're like, I just want somebody who's over the expectations as much as me. You'll eventually find that person who's like, Hey man, I just like once you get beaten down so hard with sticks, you'll find other people at the bottom of the smooshed pile <laughs> and you'll thug it out. Yeah, but, it, but I mean, kind of, it's like, you see somebody <laughs> where it's like, and honestly, it kind of goes back to the thing in, like, the, the, it's sort of like a slight tangent on, like, the rom-com theory is the, on top of, like, the main will they, won't they, there's always that couple who just right away, they're like, oh, you're over shit? I too am over shit. We're going to get together while we watch these two schmucks, you know, duke it out for That's the next 90 nice. minutes. And we're going to be a consistent couple who from the get-go, we're already past the shit when we meet each other. And it's like, oh, and you can, you can usually recognize that in a they're person, not dude. a couple. Yeah, but you're, you're just like talking crap about everyone else. And then eventually you're just like, did you guys come in together in the same car? <laughs> yeah exactly well dude that that was like with the with our one friends where it was like i was like Wait, watch their came together yeah <laughs> well it wasn't that they came together it was like there was our fourth of july party and they like they showed up like five minutes apart and then they left like five minutes apart 
But what they weren't counting on is I was the only friend out of all their group of friends who was in all of their other group of friends. So I would see them at every get together show up and leave five to ten minutes apart. And I, I told her about two weeks beforehand, they're going to tell us they're dating. It was cute. It was cute. And now they got married and went to their wedding uh, this past summer. They had a lightsaber battle. They had a lightsaber battle. Okay. Anyway. We're getting into the story. I'm sorry. Are you getting a chair or are you going to stay and animate I'm going to keep and then I'll come and listen afterwards. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Be careful. No, I'm just kidding. Dave, you, oh my <laughs> god, I'm sorry. Doesn't that just trigger something in you? Didn't we all know someone who has said, don't be sorry, be careful. Okay. Okay, tough guy. <laughs> okay. That's so funny because to me that just sounded like good dad advice. You know, if you say it sweet and gentle yeah. enough. It's, it's got to be, be it's sorry. stern be but careful. gentle. Don't be sorry. Be careful. Yeah, that's not the way I ever heard it, though. Well, now you will. Oh, daddy vibe. <laughs> Play with the daddy vibes. Positive masculinity, TJ. Okay. But on to things not going. Second date went wrong. I want to come on here and vent about what happened to me last night. I, 31-year-old male, matched with this very attractive person, 26-year-old female, about three weeks ago on a dating app. We talked shortly and agreed to meet up one evening. The date went really well. We had some fun conversations, walked around downtown, got some food, and ended up dropping her back home around midnight. The day after, she reached out to me and told me she wanted to see me again. So we chose a day that worked with both our schedules, and I planned the evening. I was really excited about seeing her again, and I made that known to her. She said she felt the same. So Friday comes, I put together a small gift bag with some candy and treats for her since it's Christmas in a few days, and I get ready. I pick her up from her place, we hug, she tells me I smell good, and she's all smiles. It's looking really good so far, you guys. It sounds like bro is nailing it. We get to the restaurant where I made dinner reservations, and I mean, the chemistry is amazing. We're laughing, we're having a good time once again. We finish up dinner and head out to the activity I planned for after dinner. Okay, so we're following the whole Second and third date territory, we add on to the dinner with an activity, it sounds like. We're, we are entering $250 territory, gentlemen. We're there. We're in the 250 zone. <laughs> I wanted to try something new, and she said she enjoys puzzles, so I booked us an escape room, which I had never done before, and neither did she. We were both doing something outside of our comfort zone and she enjoyed the idea of it. We get out to the destination. The host greets us and gives us the rundown and rules. We're taken to the room and given one hour to complete it. And it doesn't say this specifically, but it sounds as though they were the only two in the room. It was a bit confusing knowing where to begin, but we managed to make some progress and then apparently things went wrong. I was really excited and solved some of the room with no issues, to which she then told me that I had definitely been there before. I took this as a joke and laughed it off, but I noticed her energy had changed. We continued for about 10 to 15 more minutes, and she kept telling me the puzzles, or to solve the puzzles as if I knew the solution. Shortly after, she told me she was going to book an Uber home, and I was confused. She left the room, and I wasn't sure what was going on. I followed behind her, and the host looked at us confused, and I kind of embarrassingly told her that we were done, and I thank her for the experience. Yeah, what's so, um, what's interesting about this, just as a side note, going back to my experience working in an escape room, is that what you typically do, whether you win or lose the room, is you stick around for, like, a photo with props, or, like, you at least have the opportunity to, like, get some kind of complimentary stuff to remember the experience, especially since you aren't allowed to take pictures inside of the room. So I can see why the situation would be awkward for everybody involved. All right. 
I go outside and basically try to talk to her about what's going on through her head and she told me that I was trying to test her and make her seem stupid because I had obviously been there before with other women and she wasn't going to waste her time on a man who plays games. I was heartbroken and communicated to her that I've been single for the better half of a year and I've never done anything like that before. To which she quickly dismissed it, saying she's good at reading people and her intuition was telling her that I was lying. She was then demanding that I pay for her Uber home for wasting her time and that she felt uncomfortable getting back in the car with me and dropping her off. I didn't pay, of course, but I did wait outside with her until her ride came, to which I was told I was being weird. She said a few hurtful things. I didn't know how to prove to her that I was being honest. I was just in disbelief and came back home pretty sad. Wow. So to me, it seems pretty obvious that this is a person who does not like being put in situations where they feel belittled in any way. This, this was unfortunately, I think, most likely a lot of different factors um we could really deep dive we could be like does she have a sister that she regularly competes with were her parents very strict in making sure that she was the best at everything like i said though being just two people to solve an escape room in an hour is really stressful most people don't end up enjoying it that that is a pretty common experience um, and I have seen couples get really frustrated with each other, but it's, it is a, a sign of a consistent personality choice to lash out and blame other people every time that you're frustrated. Because the fact of the matter is to jump to such an assumption that oh, this is just what you do to try to impress girls, like, but he, I don't know, he didn't say if they got out of the room or not. I guess he didn't make it clear if they won, but it sounded like he, they didn't win. It's very unclear from the messages. If, okay, if they had somehow, like, won the room and it was, by and large because he solved them all I could potentially see her maybe like getting that vibe that like oh this is just something that you do to impress people if like every single one was done with ease but it would be it's such a large and bold and uncharitable assumption to say that the most likely scenario a scenario that you believe so concretely with your whole chest that you're going to just storm off and commit to it is that he fakes never going to escape rooms and he's just got everybody in on it like everybody who works at these places is supposed to just pretend like they don't remember him everybody's in on this gig that he does to just get so mad laid honestly i would take that as a really strong compliment if i was a dude like, man, she thinks that I am, like, that hot that I am just, like, pulling women into every escape room that I have so much, like, time to just do all of these escape rooms to get to know all these women. The, the escape room swindler, look out, come into a zip code near you. <laughs> That's, that's really interesting. And I think I can't help but feel that a large part of this also has to do with the social media influence because I talk about this all the time and I'm not going to stop talking about this until ever, probably. It's not going to stop. But I'm not going to stop addressing the fact that we as women are constantly being fed and socialized these notions that like 
men are so bad and they are all these master manipulators they're all these pickup artists they have nefarious intent like why even bother then at that point like why are you even bothering dating if you're not going to give any benefit of the doubt if you are not going to assume positive intent with this person what what kind of a dude is paying for a whole escape room just to impress you with his knowledge that's trust me that is not the th the big thing that women are looking for look of course women like a man who can solve problems but that's like a woman trying to prove to you that she's a homemaker by solving a puzzle like that's that's obviously not the quality that you're looking for in a woman it's great that she loves puzzles <laughs> i i don't think any one of you can look at me in the eyes and tell me like i was really on the fence about my wife you know we were dating and things were okay and then she showed me this 1000 piece jigsaw of the Twin Towers and I just, my jaw hit the floor. I was in love in that moment. I had to buy a ring that same week. This, it's never gonna be the thing, but maybe this is the one guy who, that's not what, there is no man out there doing this. But she's been so convinced there is, so that sucks. It sucks that like, she really liked him. To give you an idea of how we know that, like, she really liked him is the fact that, like, and I get that some guys get it wrong, but, like, the way he describes this, even he knew that she liked him. It's so rare that a man actually knows <laughs> or even has a glimmer of hope that a woman likes him. So I feel like this guy's intuition was probably pretty spot on. It's just that he's such a, a little sweetie patootie pie that he's still affording her his own benefit of the doubt that he doesn't understand what happened. He doesn't understand that like, oh buddy, that's what trauma looks like. That's a traumatized person. Um, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. You're used to being able to do something about that usually you have a solution this is you're at a loss here though there's nothing you can do um because the problem is oftentimes when traumatized people react they start to escalate and when they start escalating they often start misbehaving and that misbehavior starts to lead to the narrative shift of reassigning blame and it's going to be the nearest person usually. So like, of course, it's you, this man who took her to an escape room, hoping the best for his life. You're now the one that she's going to have to reassign the blame to. And the, we're going to have to emotionally rewrite the story to where you are actually the one who had this whole nefarious plot. And that is why she stormed off and absolutely made a scene and refused to continue the date. Like, in reality, she had a short fuse because she was getting frustrated by the situation. And this is often how they self-sabotage. I don't think many of us have had similar experiences during our more unhealed times of life. It just sucks when we give in to those and then blow it with good people. You know what I mean? And the thing is, too, if... If this lady is watching right now by any stretch of the imagination, dude, if you apologized and you were like, oh, I'm sorry, I've had really crappy experiences in the past, but like, you really didn't deserve that. In fact, let me take you out and plan something, whether we've done it before or not. Like, let's try to start this back over. I bet you he would give you another chance too. This dude, for sure he would. But that's a long shot. It's a long shot. <laughs> lesson learned 
if you plan an escape room, just make sure you at least got a good group going. Try to be like, yeah, how about you invite a friend and I invite a friend. If you even have like a couple and we make it like a trifecta kind of thing, that might be cool. Make it, make it happen. All right. Let me see if I can refresh this. There we go. There's the read mark. Okay. For a final story of the evening, I tried to last a little bit longer, but I'm sure you guys can tell I'm a little bit punky still. Just a little bit punky, but we are going to close this up with one final kind of am I the a-hole relationship advice story. And it's called my, so 26 year old male fiance, who's a 24 year old female, is reconsidering our relationship over a sandwich. Next month, we will have been together for three years. We have been living together for 11 months, and I proposed five months ago. This situation is absolutely absurd to me. A couple of weeks ago, my fiance asked me to get takeaway, like takeout, because she was too tired to cook. She's an A&E nurse and was still recovering after having had the virus. Caught from the ward at work. I went to Greg's after work. I believe that's uh, just a shopping food place. I had a voucher where I would get a second free sandwich identical to my first order. I ordered us tuna crunch baguettes. I forgot that she's allergic to several types of fish and shellfish, including tuna. It was an honest mistake on my part, but she flipped out. I offered to cook for her. I was going to let it go because she was just getting over being ill, but she was still mad the next day and left our flat to go stay with one of her mates. Besides the tuna, she was also upset that I couldn't recite her usual Greg's order by heart or her order from another one of our regular takeaways, even though she knew mine. She has a better memory than I do. She hasn't returned, and she said she's reconsidering our relationship over a sandwich. She says the sandwich is just a symptom, but that's absurd. I made a mistake of forgetting the allergy, but I don't believe it's something to end the relationship over. She was disappointed when I got home and told her what sandwiches I bought, but I didn't think it would be something she'd leave over. My family and my mates say that I'm right and this is crazy for her to be reconsidering everything over this. The one time I spoke to her since she left, she says her family all agrees with her. I do love her. I want to marry her. It's crazy to me that I'm in this situation. I cannot believe it. So we surprise, surprise, once again have a situation where a man is absolutely blindsided by his partner leaving him. Does not get it. Give me a quick one in the chat if you get why she's mad and you get why there's problems two in the chat if you are also pretty blindsided over this if you too would be like huh i'm just curious as like an initial read through before i start going into my assessment so I have a lot of mixed feelings on this, okay? Because my, vi I'll tell you my very first reaction and then I'll get a little bit more objective outside of that first reaction, you know, take it to that next level and, and kind of be a little bit more charitable than my initial thoughts. But my initial thought is you've been with this woman for three years and a fish allergy is pretty pretty significant now i guess it could be that they maybe live somewhere where fish aren't as common i guess 
I don't know where that would be though, where fish is not regularly served and you have to regularly come into the discussion of, can we share this meal? Can we share this appetizer? Can we order this? Can we have this for dinner? Like in three years, you're going to marry this person. You just forgot that they're allergic. It's my first point of contention. My second major point is that like, I think we all know how we get when we are hangry. I'm talking like you have not eaten all day, but at the same time, you've also physically exhausted yourself. Like you've been really hard at work, especially if any of you are in nursing, the medical field or anything similar, you know how many steps you're walking each day. Not to mention the mental calories that you are burning, having to problem solve, think on the fly, improvise, like you're working, you're moving, you're burning calories so hard, you're so hungry. And if someone like promises you food, but they like mess it up or they get you something you can't eat, I know that disappointment too. I feel that that does suck. I know that pain. I get it. Now, trying to just be a little bit more charitable here. Looking back, saying like, Lauren, think think really hard about this. I am, I will say this. I had a long-term like high school boyfriend who I was with for like a very long time, high school sweetheart situation. And we had been together for probably two, two and a half years. I've known him for even longer that he says something about, very casually about his missing tooth in his mouth between two other fully there teeth. And I was like, he like would sometimes mess with me, you know, like sometimes like you do. And I was like, dude, you're, you're not missing a tooth. That's like one of the most ridiculous like jokes and pranks you've ever tried to pull. And he's like, Lauren, I have a missing tooth in my mouth. And I'm like, stop, dude. That's so stupid. Why would you lie about that? Like, why would you lie about missing, having a missing tooth? That's such a weird thing to lie about. Like I have been dating you for two years. I'm like, like borderline obsessed with you because I'm in high school. I'm pretty sure I would know if you were missing a tooth. And he was like, are you, you're completely serious? Like you're dying on this hill right now. You're not going to admit that I'm missing a tooth. And I'm like, no, you're because you're messing with me. Yeah, this man was definitely missing a tooth. Like 1000% there was not a tooth there. And I just, for many years, was completely oblivious to that somehow. So... I know it sounds like a crappy thing to say. You can say that I'm like excusing toxic behavior, but I think that people forget that forgetting is more fair of, of an excuse than people realize. And that it's tricky because it's almost borderline impossible to tell the difference between someone who has really honest, good intentions and is an overall good person and happens to forget things sometimes and a person who knows that you know that people forget things sometimes and is going to weaponize that so that they can get you to fall for it over and over again. But you've got to imagine, most people and probably the person that you've chose to stay with for years is probably in the first category of like very well-intentioned happens to forget things sometimes. I'm gonna like honestly be real here and say I could see how you could forget. What do you think, uh, Mister? You came charging and I I was listening and I was and really him. thinking about it because at first I was like, dude, fuck this guy. That's what I'm but saying. Then, that was me at first. I was like, but I was yeah. thinking about it and I'm like, if again, I don't know how much you qualified it, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, if this were a day where I had worked one of my 11-hour shifts at the warehouse, That's what I'm and saying. you called me and you were like, 
hey, will you get this? And I'm like, oh my god, I've literally been out of the house for more. I've worked for almost literally half the day. Dude, I, I don't want to go local do Indian this. Place, you know that I'm going to get you your order. Like, your spicy, yeah. like, this would destroy my life shrimp. You know I'm going to get it right for you. It's, so I At first, I could not really. But then I was sitting there going, if it was one of those days where I'm tired, I'm like, all right, I'm going in, I'm going out. And it's like, I just, and I'm sitting there going, if this guy has trouble remembering things, again, maybe he wasn't tired and this was just a huge F up on his part. I'm trying to give literally every single benefit of the doubt that I could, where I'm like, in the alignment of everything going perfectly for this to make sense, it could have been a long day. He could have been tired. He himself could have been hungry. And I'm sitting there. The only way that in my head this makes sense is your brain connected. Because he said numerous things in that sandwich. Your brain connected your partner and the things in that sandwich and took zero steps after that. It's like, hey, don't forget don't forget Linda and fish. And you're like, yep, Linda and fish. Fish sandwich, please. And then halfway home, you're like, fuck, it's that Linda can't have fish. Shit. And like, he, it's also, I feel like we have to keep in mind, he offered to cook immediately. Oh. As soon, I like, as that. soon, yeah, right here. I forgot that she's allergic to several types of fish. It was an honest mistake on my part. I offered to cook for her. But I get it, again, on her part, it's like, I know you've had days where, like, I basically been the husband and I come home and I'm like, I got you this because you love this. And you're like, I actually hate that. And I'm like, that's right. Oh my right. god, yeah, I have a lot you, of moments like you that. You do hate that. I misremembered your your alignment to that thing. And it's like... And I do that to you too. And you're, you're so like, upset. And I'm like... And you're not, like, outwardly upset, but I'm like, let me cook. And you're like, no, no. And I'm like, on the same note, like... I get it, especially with my ADHD. If I don't even do that though out of guilt, like if, I'm not trying to make you feel bad for not like. I just figured it's one of those things where you're so hungry like, that people oh, are like, I just don't even want to eat anymore. Like that's how I'll get. Yeah, it's like that's why. That's I'm how I'll get. I totally get like when you're so hungry and you're like. Oh my god, all you had to do was remember this like yep. basic yep. thing that I can't have, like. I understand that pain, but at the same time, like, I've also been the person that I'm like, I cannot believe I just made such a stupid mistake. Yeah. And like, it's... The, to le like, to literally be like, I'm reconsidering the relationship. Basically... Is she pregnant? I'm just saying, they've been together for a while, they're living together, and these seem like really, really really intense emotional turns that I feel, I feel if you've been with this woman for almost three, almost four years or whatever it is, that... It's either pregnant or being chronically enabled. That's my thing, yeah. Because it's <laughs> like, I feel like this behavior you would have absolutely noticed with somebody after three years again, but then she would be like, yeah, like you noted somebody's allergies. So I guess it's like, it's kind of a tit for tat on that. But I just wonder, like, oftentimes, how often these women would have had these same reactions were it not for things that we see in the social media culture, like the orange peel theory, which yeah. is the theory where you hand a man an orange and you ask him if he'll peel it for you. And if he either says, like, sure, and does it, or he's like, why do you need me to peel an orange for you? You can judge literally every single thing there is to know about his character and how he will treat you in the relationship. All right, well, this is how I would treat uh, an, a, a full grown-ass adult woman if she brought me an orange and was like, open this. I'd be like, I'm gonna. Is there a reason you are unable to open the orange by yourself? I, I want you to give me an explanation, other adult, as to why. If you just want me to do it, I'll do it. But it's like, it seems like, right. like what, I'd be like, is this a test? What is this proving? Where does the man who goes, oh, have you never peeled an orange? Fall yeah. in the, 
Is he, does he give, just give daddy vibes and it's still a win at that point? Oh yeah, 100%, dude, because he's, he's still doing, doing it for you, but he's putting you in your place while you do it. Not appeal to you. All right. Yeah, it's, it is. Those are big daddy vibes, though. Of It's like, I'm going to do it for you, but I'm also going to be like, did you really need me to do this but you for know you? What sucks is, you know how I was saying that it's really, really hard to distinguish between a man who's really well-intentioned but sometimes forgets and a man who has recognized a pattern of being given the benefit of the doubt for his organized incompetence, and so he uses it. Like, which yeah. is, again, a very small margin of people there, out there. It is a phenomenon that is real, but it is not the majority. But just like that, it's really hard to distinguish between a woman who is setting proper standards for herself and using discernment to pick the best partner for herself which is good which is something that i think that we would all encourage for women in the dating market yeah. to do of course 100 percent. and a woman who is training a man to say yes and jump as high as she demands oh yeah 100 percent. which is also not the majority but it it exists it definitely exists the super chats aren't turned off you should be able to super the, chat uh, we've got a couple from from cameron tamriel forever um Tamriel forever oh my god i didn't even notice that i love your username now i want an orange which um, woman will peel an orange for this man <laughs> <laughs> durable days i love it um i don't know i think ultimately all of this fell in the fact that he did make a pretty big boo-boo because like you said fish allergies uh, again yeah. this is what's different to me is it's not like i come home and i'm like hey i got you this this ginger ice cream because i know you like ginger and you're like i actually don't like ginger and it's like oh whoops as opposed to hey I got you this ginger ice cream, and you're like, if I ingest this, I will literally die. There is, those are not equal, I will say, to yeah. where I'm like, I understand why she did get a little upset, because it's not like you're allergic to, I don't know, dude, I feel like fish, shellfish, and peanuts are like the big three that are really hard to forget. Really hard, like food allergies, I feel are like, the hardest to forget because like that's shit that you put in your mouth like that that is stuff we're always thinking about like like the it's it's not like i'm allergic to sea chlor like but it's a fucking antibiotic that was discontinued in 2018 like I, I, that's so like obviously i never and nor will you ever have to worry about my allergies but like if yeah. If our daughter was allergic to peanuts, or like we, she had someone in her class who was allergic to peanuts, and we even yeah, removed we them much, from our I house. Was say we pretty much act like a peanut allergy house because of a kid who doesn't even live here. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. How bad is the allergy? I feel with fish and shellfish, it's usually like I think bad. you would say if if it that if it was a severe allergy. I mean, it seems we're, we're going to focus it mainly on the inconvenience of the fact that she cannot eat it. Okay, so even if it's inconvenient, I think that was the biggest F up. But then I think she disproportionately reacted, especially after he offered to immediately make it right. Now, again, I do understand the notion of it, right after, if he's like, I'm sorry, let me cook. And she's like, no, no, I just don't want anything to eat right now. That's fine. Go stew, come back and be like, you know what? Yes, thank you for offering to cook. Would you still mind cooking something for me? 100%. Dude, solved. Instead, you decided to double down on something that he already apologized for. That's my thing. It's like, he's already acknowledged his bad. Let me make this right. But you're like, no, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have someone in the chat, someone said I made a new friend recently, and they came over and I had made sourdough bread and mozzarella, forgetting they had the gluten allergy, it felt really bad, she was chill, just had the mozzarella, but it's like, dude, yeah, I, I, I do that with, with my friend, I'm trying not to name drop, all the time, who also has, like, so many allergies to keep up with, and I try to remember, like, gluten-free snacks, gluten-free snacks, but I've absolutely done the same thing where I'm like, oh, shoot, you can only eat, like, it's hard. I'm so sorry, I'm a dummy, but like it happens. I think I feel like she'll have a lot more forgiveness for it when it's her. Yeah. I she's think... the one who like brings the 
brings the strawberry cake to the girl's birthday who's allergic to strawberries. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she'll, she'll get her day. I think she'll end up coming back. But at the same time, what a lot of people are speculating in the chat is that he's probably an a-hole in other aspects of That's the also because I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking like, and again, I'm, I have a real skewed view on like being sensitive to other people's food needs because my oldest friend is the child of two Lebanese Muslim immigrants. So like mm, we Lebanese spent food. our entire childhood together. So my entire childhood has been being sensitive to the fact that, hey, when, you know, let's use a, a good just sort of standard uh, Lebanese name, the McGillicuddy's, when the McGillicuddy's are coming over, standard. we can't have, you know, we're not going to have any pork. We're not going to have any ham. Okay, cool. Great. Because their religion doesn't have it. Cool. Great. Never and so for me, I've always been very like, hey, do you have any, is there any like food things? Do you have to worry about anything being kosher, halal, like, let me know. And like it, for years after like th their kids went off to college and I went off to college, eventually I had a friend who was practicing Muslim and they were like, nobody ever asks me that. And it's like, I ask that every time because it's like, it's all about your environment. And it's like, the last thing I want is to be like, the last thing I want to do is to have been so excited for you coming over for dinner all day. And it's like, our friends are coming over. I'm so excited to have everybody here. And they're like my favorite couple. And then they show up and you serve them their food and they both go, oh, ah, there's pork in this sauce. We actually can't eat the pork. And it's like, son of a bitch. If I had known that five hours ago, I wouldn't have, I, this is all the waste now. I can't eat all this. I can't give that to you. We're going to order pizza. So it's like. I don't know. To me, I'm I'm just a little bit more like, really? You forgot the allergy the guy? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. It is kind of a big thing to forget. Kind of yeah, a big... I will switch. On that note, though. Six inches. But that was our final story of the day that I have prepared for you so far. Look, I know I'm at the tail end of this. So if I start to feel less congested, I think I might try to do another live tomorrow. And what I would love to do there is talk about that video that I wanted to get into with you and go a little bit, it's gonna go a little bit more into the orange peel theory. I want to just deep dive on that subject in particular and then kind of get a little bit more into the the deeper tests that are put being put in place specifically for men, what the expectation is from these tests, and then I th I'll just let you guys react with me as we hear from some of the women in these I'll just say it like female red pilled spaces of feminism that are perpetuating these beliefs that these tests are valid because women are the prize, have intrinsic value. Again, things that why would you fight against that if you're a woman, right? Like, why am I as a woman trying to argue? that I don't have intrinsic value, that I shouldn't be put on a pedestal, that I'm not, I shouldn't be owed men's money. There's all these mountains of evidence to support the idea that I am worth more inherently than men. Why would I reject that? It's not, it's not a very popular thought process to reject such a great, gift of an idea. I think it's very similar to why a lot of men start going toward some toxic spaces of the internet that, you know, speak so poorly of women because why would you not accept the gift of being told, of course as a man you're intrinsically smarter and worth more than dumb women. Because you're, you're a smarter person than that when you reject those kinds of mentalities. These women, it's so ironic that the same women who preach these ideas that they are intrinsically better and superior to their counterparts. 
and that their counterparts need to be doing more for them. It is not, it is not reciprocal. Ironically, they would never, ever, ever be with a man who himself immersed in such spaces but for men. Would she? No. And she shouldn't. And and men are right to recognize when women are immersing themselves in toxic spaces that are putting really egotistical, self-centric, narcissistic ingredients to marinate in. You, a man is not wrong for not wanting to date someone who associates with stuff like that. I'll just put it there. But for the next time that, hopefully the next time we go live, if not for sure this Monday, when we go over some other crazy stuff, for sure soon I want to talk about the orange peel theory with you guys and dive into a little bit more there. So in the meantime, if you're having fun and you don't want to miss stuff like this, make sure that you are subscribed down below. Make sure that in addition to that, you have the notification bell turned on because you would hate to be subscribed, sure, but then miss all of these cool lives while they're happening. You just get the punched up version without the cool stuff like when I had to leave for five minutes to blow my nose. You would hate that. That would keep you up at night. It would haunt your dreams. You would tell the story to your grandkids so that they could never, ever, ever make the same mistake in their lives. So just, I don't want that to happen to you. Um, make sure you comment, keep the engagement going, and go check out some of my other stuff. I'm sure there is somehow videos of mine that you haven't seen yet. There are hundreds at that point. I literally don't stop talking. But seriously, you guys are awesome. I love my chat. I always have so much fun with you guys. That's why I choose to hang out with you instead of my blankets and my Nintendo Switch. You know what a choice that is? That I chose you over that and just sleeping? No, but seriously, you guys are the best. I am going to keep taking my vitamins so that I can be in the best shape ever. I have so many scripts written up that I want to film. I'll see you guys soon, though.